Hello everyone, and today I have a very fun and counter-attacking opening weapon against pawn to e4 by white, the Russo Gambit. So, this comes after e4, we go pawn up to e5, white now plays knight to f3 attacking our pawn, we'll defend with knight to c6, and white now plays bishop to c4. This is the very common and standard Italian game, but we're going to take it into a weird direction with pawn up to f5, and this marks the Russo Gambit. So, we are immediately counter for striking white center and let's see first if they try to accept our gambit and this is already so tricky because accepting it is a bad move because we have pawn up to e4 now we're attacking their knight and because we're covering all the squares that it can go to it's actually going to have to drop back to g1 which is going to be extremely sad and let's see real quick if white just tries like queen to e2 here trying to pin the pawn to our king we're simply going to unpin it with queen to e7 now their knight is going to be forced to drop back to g1 and we're simply going to develop now with knight to f6 and our plan is very simple we're going to play pawn to d5 we're going to win our pawn back and we are doing great here and white can already make a massive blunder here with something like pawn to d3 trying to attack our pawn in center this is the most common move but it already loses because knight to d4 now attacking their queen and the c2 pawn it must drop back let's say to d1 and we simply take anyways we fork them and the idea is that after they capture we simply take their pawn now their queen is attacked and we unleash this discovered check so they really cannot do anything here let's say the block we can simply capture their queen we are up a ton of material now and we are already completely winning there so that certainly does not work a better try here would be something like knight to c3 sorry knight to c3 here at which point we still have a great position after knight to d4 attacking the queen it must go back to d1 and now we can simply play pawn to c6 preparing the pawn to d5 push at which point we'll just be dominating the center let's say they play knight g to e2 now we can simply capture the pawn like this we'll still play pawn to d5 we're not even down material and we are completely dominating there so queen e2 is basically a completely losing line their better try is to back up to g1 immediately at which point this is how we're going to play we'll develop with knight to f6 and the plan here is very similar we're going to try to go d5 and win the pawn back try to castle and we'll be doing great let's say d3 here now we can play pawn to d5 attack the bishop let's say they try bishop to b5 here attempt to pin our knight we simply capture the pawn it does not matter and just going through all the most common moves here let's say they capture we can simply take back with our bishop let's now say knight to f3 here and we just play simple chess we're going to develop with bishop to c5 then we'll quickly castle here and at this point we're not down upon we have a great center here we have a lot of development a lot more than white and we are just having a fantastic time there so you can already see that capturing the pawn immediately and accepting gambit does not really work instead let's look at a better try for them which is pawn to d3 here not capturing the pawn but instead just moving their pawn up defending their center and preparing to quickly castle at which point we're going to develop our bishop here to c5 targeting the f2 pawn and white can fall for a vicious trap here with knight to g5 this is the most common move defended by the bishop and white is going for this fork on um, f7 here which is very hard to prevent what you want to do here is you don't want to play some like you know knight to h6 or prevent it some sad development you're simply going to play f4 here and this goes into something called the dubois trap so the bishop is now cut off from the knight so the knight is currently hanging so white uh, pretty much always just plays knight to f7 it looks like we are getting forked and we're just completely lost here but not to worry our queen slides in to h4 and we're threatening checkmate so first off they can't take the rook because queen takes just checkmate there is nothing there most of the time here white will simply castle and how this can go from here is you don't care about this rook at all you don't do anything about it you simply play knight to f6 and your plan here is that after white captures you move your knight in to g4 and you are already winning here you're down an entire rook but the attack is way too strong you're threatening checkmate on h2 here they have to push up to h3 to prevent that but you simply take on f2 now 
their queen is under attack if they just try to move it like queen to f3 we have checkmate here after knight takes an h3 double check let's say king over to h1 now we have knight to f2 another double check let's say king moves over we slide our queen all the way into h1 it's already checkmate. So the queen to f3 certainly does not work. Their best try would be to sack the exchange here with rook takes. We're going to take back with our queen. And after king over to h1, admittedly, white still is up a little bit of material here. But after pawn to f3, we are completely winning. We're trying to hammer open their position. They can't take of the queen because queen to g1 is going to be checkmate. They have to take with the g pawn. This is the only way for them to prevent any checkmate immediately and now we simply play d5 here the reason we play this move is that we attack their bishop and our own bishop is going to get in so if they just simply like capture let's say with the pawn our knight is attacked it does not matter bishop takes on h3 checkmate is simply unstoppable on g2 they can prevent it for one move we capture they move queen to g2 is checkmate so you can already see how all of those natural moves that were played for white can immediately lead into a checkmate let's go over the best moves now uh back here instead of taking the rook immediately the only way for white to get a playable position here is to go pawn the g3 to try and attack our queen at which point you don't want to trade you just want to sneak your queen in to h3 now and what we're doing here is that now that there's no more immediate checkmate threat white will most likely think that this is now a free rook but it still does not work because the same strike in the center d5 attacking their bishop and we're going to open up our own bishop to come to g4 and start causing mayhem let's say the capture on d5 the bishop our bishop can come into g4 attacking their queen let's say they play f3 this is the most common move to trying to attack our bishop we're not going to you know back up and be passive and stupid we're going to play aggressive chess we're going to capture on g3 and we are winning here the idea is that after they capture back we don't capture again we push up to g2 and yeah white is lost white's rook is under attack but it simply has no squares here if they just try rook to g1 we can simply capture it there is no hope for white in this position they're completely lost and even though we are technically still down material we're gonna move our bishop we're gonna promote and there is no hope for white in that position either so you can already see that you know white really has to play razor sharp here their best try to not deal with any of this is to not play knight to g5 in the first place and instead just castle here and if they play like castles or some other move like knight to c3 or some other developing move this is how you're going to play first you're going to put this knight on f6 then after white develops you're going to go pawn up to d6 here open up your bishop to protect the pawn and what we're going to do here is in a lot of lines we're going to end up playing f4 and still even in this line we're going to try and attack a white for example let me show you how this can play out let's say white now plays bishop to g5 pinning this to this we're going to play the move knight to a5 here attacking their bishop it can't go to any squares so white's most common move here is a knight into d5 if they try like bishop back to b3 then we can simply capture pawn captures and now we just play c6 and there uh, a lot of their ideas in center are now going to be controlled and we are already doing very well there but knight to d5 is what most people play trying to play at this pin here but we don't care at all we're simply going to capture their bishop let's say they capture back now and this knight here get it out of there we're going to play c6 attack the knight after they capture we can take back the pawn let's say bishop to h6 now and here is the key position you do not capture and win a quote-unquote free pawn you push up to f4 and you are doing fantastic your plan now is you're going to try and get your queen into the king side you're going to move this rook over and you're going to try and start attacking them let's say white now plays knight to h4 here opening up their queen you want to be careful here you want to play queen to c7 a queen trade here would just benefit us we have a really really solid position let's say they play c3 here now 
we can simply develop bishop d6 and we're going to long castle on the next move now we're going to continue with that plan of trying to attack white here and we have an advantage we're not down any material and we are doing great so those are the two main lines covered there is one more thing that you should know which is their best try which is pawn to d4 striking in the center immediately and this is how you're going to play you're going to capture on e4 attacking their knight they always play if knight takes on e5 here and now you strike in the center with d5 attacking their bishop and their best move here is bishop to b5 pinning and attacking our knight but there is one very fun trap here which is queen to h5 check and the idea here is that after we block with uh, g6, white can try, knight takes on g6. And it looks like we are losing because we can't take back because we lose our rook. And our rook is still trapped in the corner, but we are winning here after knight to f6. Attacking the queen, and they need to keep this pin here, so their only move to survive is queen back to h4 here. At which point, in all the chaos, the winning move here is knight takes on d4. And there is a lot going on, but at the end of the day, they cannot capture because what will happen here is we'll take on c2, we'll get this fork, let's say king moves over, and now we capture their bishop. And we're only down one point of material here, but their rook is completely trapped in the corner. And if they just try like bishop to g5 to try and get some pinning business in, we already have queen to d1 checkmate. So they can already fail very fast. A better try here would be bishop back to b3 to try and defend, but this still completely fails because of the very nice knight to f5 here attacking the queen once again they have to maintain this pin here so their only try is queen to h3 to try and keep this but now we win with knight to e7 discovered attack on the bishop and we're attacking their knight so after they move we can capture and there is no hope here we're simply up a piece and winning so that trap is very nice and something you will likely get but if they try bishop to b5 trying to pin our knight here the move you want to know is queen up to d6 and you're kind of defending everybody capturing would not be a very good move you could just capture back and your position is actually very very solid here their best try is bishop to f4 to try and get some discovered attack business but this really does not work here because you simply have pawn to a6 and white doesn't actually have any good discovered attacks if they try to capture with their knight we can simply take their bishop and we're actually winning here because both of these pieces are under attack and white has no good discoveries only thing you need to know here is that if bishop backs up to a4 you don't want to take right away because then bishop takes and you get forked here you lose your advantage instead you want to play bishop to d7 and then capture and you are winning so because of that most people capture on c6 with the check you'll take back with your pawn let's say white now castles here and how you're going to play from here is you're going to go queen to e6 get rid of any of these potentially uh, bad discovered attacks let's say white now plays c4 and you're simply going to develop with knight to f6 then you'll play bishop to d6 quickly castle here and now you're not even down any material and white only has a very slight advantage and you really do not have that many problems in your position all right well thank you for watching this video on how to play the russo gambit uh, if you like very tricky openings i'd recommend my video on the stafford gambit i hope you have a great day and i will hopefully see you next time have a great day